and welcome back to the Snap Advice YouTube channel. My name's Amy and for this video today we're going to have a look at the application of my favourite GCSE chemistry test, the flame test and the way in which we use it every year to celebrate bonfire night. The flame test is very straightforward. We take our sample of metal ions, place it into a Bunsen flame, and the color that the flame turns will tell us which metal is being burned. However, as with everything in science, there is a bit more of a complicated mechanism going on that explains exactly why the flame changes color. But don't be alarmed, if you're an A-level chemist or physicist, you should be able to keep up with what's going on. Before we get too technical, I want to talk about fireworks. Fire Fireworks are essentially just a small explosive. The fuse leads to a lift charge, which when it sets on fire, explodes. And this explosion inside the small tube of the firework causes the actual firework itself to propel upwards into the sky because of the increase in pressure. Inside the firework is another fuse which kind of delays that final explosion until the firework itself is up in the sky. And this fuse leads to the core of the firework, to a thing called the pyrotechnic star. It's where all of the metal ions are ready to be burned, as well as some other things that give different fireworks different explosion patterns. The sheer array of fireworks that we have today is thanks to the chemical engineering which has developed these different explosion patterns and colours. And this evolution of the firework has happened over a very, very long time. First used in the Song Dynasty in Imperial China and now used every year on bonfire night and on New Year's Eve as well for those incredible displays all over the world. The evolution of the firework is thanks to chemical engineering and our improved understanding of the way in which a fire works. Our ability to answer the question of why different metals burn to give a different coloured flame comes down to an enhanced understanding of the atomic structure. At this point it might be worth you refreshing your understanding of atomic structure which you can do by following this pop-up just here. So when a metal atom gets heated within a firework, this causes the electrons within the atom to become excited. Essentially, they use this energy to move from a ground state, so from their usual orbital, into an excited state where they get to move up a few orbital layers. This move is only temporary, however, because the electrons need sort of sustained energy to be able to remain in these higher orbitals. This means that they eventually move back down from their excited state into a ground state, so they move back to their original orbital. By moving back down through the orbital layers, the electrons get to release the energy that they had taken on from the heat. A quantum of energy is released per energy level that the electron moves down. Now, as you may know, energy comes in all sorts of different forms. We've got heat energy, sound energy, and the form of energy that's released when these electrons move back down through the orbitals, as you can probably guess, is light energy. The colour of the light energy depends on the energy difference between the excited electron state and the ground electron state. Simply, the greater the difference in energy, the shorter the wavelength of light. The group 1 metal ions give off an energy that gives us visible light, so we can see those different colours and identify the metal ion. The flame test doesn't work for all metals because sometimes the light energy that gets given off isn't within the visible spectrum, so we can't see for ourselves that difference between the excited electron state and the grounded electron state. I'm by no means a physicist, I'm barely a chemist. I did A-level chemistry, but I don't remember much of it. But I find this sort of transition between energy states of electrons so fascinating. The movement of electrons between their orbitals is so minute. We would never be able to see it with our eyes, but the act of them doing that produces these incredible colours that we see all the time and probably take for granted because we never consider the process behind it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you learned something new. I know I did while researching. If you did, then please do give us a like and consider subscribing to the Snap Provides YouTube channel just here. We have tons of content for you to help with your A-level revision and a good place that you can start is our A-level chemistry playlist just here. Good luck with your revision and I look forward to seeing you on the channel again soon.